late last week, Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 with promises that sound pretty good on paper. Well, we benchmarked it. Okay, get this. At the surface level, the 8 Plus Gen 1 is nothing to write home about, right? It offers like 200 megahertz uh, increase in clock speed overall, sorta. However, when we dive a bit deeper, things become a bit more interesting. Qualcomm promises 10% better performance from both the CPU and the GPU. Also, it performs 30% better energy efficiency from both the CPU and GPU. Meaning we squeeze a bit more power out of it, but overall we can do it for longer periods. Qualcomm says that all of the improvements sum up to about one hour of extra gaming on a phone that has the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So how did this happen? The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is built on a 4 nanometer process, same as the 8 Gen 1. However, the 8 Plus is built exclusively by TSMC, the leading silicone manufacturer, and Qualcomm partnered with them closely and they worked on the entire process with small improvements in every step. So with the 8 Plus Gen 1 there's no this thing improves that and this thing improves that, there's lots of tiny little improvements in the whole manufacturing process which results in some gains that are pretty hard to ignore. Enough of me talking! You're here for the benchmarks, we have the benchmarks. Asus was extremely kind in providing us with this testing platform which was built specifically to test new processors. Now what you're seeing here is not representative of an actual phone, okay? It's a testing device, that's it. That out of the way, let's dive in. We compare the results from this Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 test platform versus the results of a regular Galaxy S22 Ultra equipped with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. We started off a bit weird. Our first test was GFX Bench Car Chase and both chips performed comparably. Actually kind of funny, the 8 Plus got 2 frames less on our first test. That was weird. Now next up we have the GFX Bench Manhattan 3.1 which is much more sparkly than the last one and here we see the 8 Plus scoring a full 20 frames more than its sibling. On the Geekbench 5 test we definitely see the improvements in CPU prowess as the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 scored more than 10% more points. Though for those of you that are wondering, it's still lagging behind Apple's A15 Bionic here by a noticeable margin. Lastly, we torture these phones with 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme test. Now this test not only has an insane amount of stuff for the graphics cards to do, it also loops a total of 20 times, which allows us to see when and how much these phones are going to start throttling their performance once they heat up or they detect too much battery drainage. And I have to say wow for the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, it took all the way up to loop 16 for the processor to go, okay I've had enough of that. The Snapdragon 8 in the S22 Ultra scored less points in its best loop and also was throttled way, way, way earlier. Now to be entirely transparent, this test may or may not be very fair. Now this is a test device that has been built specifically to be pushed and this is a retail unit S22 Ultra which was made to be in hands of consumers and hopefully not overheat or drain too much battery. So obviously it will throttle down to be on the safe side whenever it needs to. But it is definitely worth mentioning that the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 in here outperformed the SD8 there and also drained about the same amount of battery throughout the whole ordeal. So the SD8 Plus Gen 1 drained about 11% of battery and the 8 Gen 1 drained 10% of battery. Luckily, we also have this Red Magic 7 phone here, which is a gamer phone, obviously, with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 inside and a physical fan, which powers up to cool the chip when needed. So we ran the stress test on that as well. And incredibly impressive, this phone did not throttle at all throughout all of the 20 loops. But we lost 35% of battery through the whole ordeal. The phone was very hot and we still couldn't even touch the best score of the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So once the 8 Plus starts going out, you may be getting slightly different results depending on what manufacturers do with it, how they optimize for it. But very obviously the potential is here. I played Apex Legends on this uh, test device. 
I put it on maximum settings with uh, maximum FPS. It does get warm, but it didn't get searing hot. It didn't drain too much battery. I was able to play a few games, go through benchmarks and still have battery in it by the end of the day. So that was our quick look at the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 benchmark results. Now this chip is coming in the latter half of 2022. It's gonna be in a lot of interesting phones. Some rumors say maybe even the Galaxy Z Fold 4, but we have no idea. Whatever phones it's in, we can't wait to test them. And you can follow our results if you subscribe and maybe even hit the like button down there. And I'll see you next time. Peace.